Good morning and welcome to worship here at Smyrna First. Glad to have you with us and to see a number of new faces, familiar faces as well as we gather for worship. On Saturday the 16th, 
of April. Saturday of the 16th of April is our Easter extravaganza in the green space out here. And I understand we've got 25,000 eggs um, that are going to be distributed there. And um, there will be a lot of other activities that day. It begins, or it's between 10 and 1 with the egg hunt promptly at 1030. Um, a lot of you have donated candy and empty eggs, and we are good with that. Thank you so much. We need two other things at this moment, at least two other things, but we'll start with these two. We need 900 snack bags of potato chips. So if any of you would like to donate the sna some snack bags, we're not asking you individually to donate 900 yourself, but, <laughs> but if you could contribute to toward that, it would be great. Also, we are in need of 50 volunteers for that morning. Um, if you are willing to do that or to help in some capacity, email or see any one of the clergy or Kristen Suddeth and we, um, or Jono, and we will make sure that you get put on a list and let you know how you are able to help. Um, also, um, you will be receiving in the mail and in Red Door Living notification of other activities going on during Holy Week and next Sunday morning in our 11 o'clock service, um, we will have our Easter cantata as well. Um, so again, glad that you are here. This morning we have a special announcement uh, from the chair of our staff parish committee, our personnel committee, um, Mr. Damon Bivick, and uh, I hope you will welcome him. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is great to be here with all of you worshiping together. As Pastor Bruce said, my name is Damon Bivick, and I'm currently serving as the chair of our staff parish relations committee here at church. Each year around April, at the beginning of April, Bishop Sue Hoppert Johnson of the North Georgia Conference of the United Methodist Church announces appointments for all of the churches in the conference. The SPR committee is happy and relieved to let you know that the pastors Derek, Shaloa, and Catherine have been reappointed to serve here at Smyrna First for the coming year. Pastor Bruce has also been reappointed to serve at Smyrna First until his retirement, which will be October 1st of this year, so that's bittersweet. And he probably does not want me to say this, but in the coming months we will have more information on ways that we can honor him and his many, many years of service to God, to this church, to me, to all of you, to our community, so be on the lookout for that. I know that you will all join us in praying for our clergy as they begin a new year of ministry here at Smyrna First. We are grateful for the leadership that they provide to us, to our church, to God, and to Smyrna and the community. So thank you all very much. We invite you at this time, if you would, to please stand to greet one another uh, this Sunday morning. but it really is to see the fellowship in this room again. Join with me in your hymnal to number 188 or on the screens and sing with me, Christ is the world's light.
Please be seated. We invite the children to come forward at this time for our children's message with Mr. John O. You know, when I was really young, you want to know what my favorite things to do was? Play soccer. I would run, 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 run. Do you guys ever run a lot? Yeah. I run all, I would run all the time. I still run sometimes. And I would just, and sometimes I would kick a ball. There might be a ball out there. I don't, I don't really remember. I just ran around a lot and that was my favorite time. But it would always happen every single time. Every time I would run, eventually I would have to go, I'm so thirsty. <sighs> and I would run to the sidelines and I would find Gatorade or water and I would just drink it all down. You got, you had just been so thirsty, you drank all, it felt like you drank all the water in the world. Yeah. One, you know, when Jesus, one of the last words that he said on the cross was, I am thirsty. Jesus showed that just like we get thirsty, he got thirsty too. A lot of times we think of Jesus as kind of like a superhero, like he can do whatever he wants, and he doesn't, he never gets thirsty, he never, he, he never has to eat. And, but no, like he was human just like us. He got really thirsty. And from the cross, he told us that we can be thirsty. I think not only was he thirsty for water, because he, he went through a lot that day, but I think he was also thirsty for the love of God to be present in the world, and that he was up on there to show us, pouring out of ourselves, but by giving away from ourselves, that we can be thirsty too, and that he was thirsty for the love of God to be present in the world. And my favorite thing about that is that he also showed us that we can be a part of showing God's love to the world. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? That's what we can be thirsty for sometimes. So will you guys pray with me before we go to kids first? Let's pray. Dear God, Help us to be thirsty for more love in the world. We know that you will show us the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to head off to Kids First. Go meet the Kids First team right on over there. Parents, you can pick them up in the, in the youth building after church. So as they are running to kids first, isn't that a blessing? Uh, please put, remain seated. It says to stand, but actually turn to 641. It's this one chorus, and it's fill my cup, Lord, and let it be our hymn as we prepare for prayer time. As we prepare for um, prayer this morning, just a note that uh, Pastor Derek and Pastor Shaloa have a Sunday off today, and that's why you're not seeing them here, but we welcome Reverend Bev Marshall Goodell, um, who will bring our morning message for us this morning. So welcome, Bev. Um, please pray with me. God of all glory and all things good of all creation, we give you thanks. Thanks for opportunities for worship. Thanks for gathering in this space. And thank you for one another. In this Lenten season and as we have journeyed through your words, Jesus, of that last week, we come to the words this morning, I am thirsty. 
And Lord, we can't imagine what that may mean or may have meant for you. Um, Our minds can try to comprehend, but not fully. But Lord, we know your desire in us is that we would thirst after you. And we pray, O God, that this morning and in the days ahead, you would help us once again to refocus, to recenter, to have a longing for you, a longing for others, and a longing to love and to serve. Forgive us when we don't, O God. Free us for obedience. Free us for joy. Free us for service. Help us to recognize the needs of others as being more important than our own, just as you witness to us. As we gather this morning, we pray for those impacted by fires in Tennessee. We pray for those who are living on the edge of volcanoes that are erupting. We pray for governments that are fighting internally and externally, as in Pakistan, as with the Koreas. And of course, oh God, our heart continues to pray, our hearts continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, for all that was lost, for all that continues to be lost. And of course, we pray for those in Russia who have not wanted to have been a part of all of this, but at moments have felt their hands to be tied. And so we commit this all to you. But we commit our own nation to you as we continue to sort through pandemic, continue to sort through economic challenges, continue to sort through cultural changes. God, changes only take place when we allow you to and when we allow you to use us. May we be people who seek change, who seek justice, who are merciful and forgiving, but God, who are also willing to stand firmly for that which is right. So bless us, O God, we pray, as we seek you to know what is right and how to stand firmly and how to love when we don't want to. Bless us, God, in this time of worship. Bless Bev as she brings the message. Derek, as he gets a few days of relaxing. Shaloa, as she is away with her family as well. But guide us all, O Lord, this day, in the days ahead, that we might truly be light and life to the world of Smyrna and beyond. (coughs) We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus who taught us to pray as we would say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because we have recognized that God calls us to give of our time and our talents, our witness, our service, our coming together in prayer, we recognize things like the contributions that made 25,000 Easter eggs possible for this community. We recognize the gifts of the people who will come and serve. And we recognize the gifts and the commitment of classes that yesterday held a picnic for single young mothers of toddlers and infants to celebrate Easter, to share the love of Jesus Christ with them. Thankful for people who give in that way as well. And so as the ushers come today, let us be reminded again of how we give of our finances, but also how we give of ourselves What is our commitment? And how is it that we are willing to love and to serve others? The ushers will come at this time. Thank you.
Please remain standing for the reading of the Gospel. Today it's the book of John, chapter 19, verses 28 and 29. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And a special thanks to the new praise singers who are in their second service already, and we're going to allow some of them to slip out. 
Usually, uh, my husband and I attend the Common Foundation, Modern Worship in the Fellowship Hall, so I may not know many of you that are here. So let me introduce myself. Hi, my name is Beverly, and I'm thirsty. That was good. My husband, Kim, and I moved here after I retired in June of 2018 to be close to our two sons and our two grandsons. But today's message is not about me. It's about the last words of Jesus. Many of you will already know that all four Gospels tell of Jesus being offered wine while dying on the cross. And you know that anything that's mentioned in all four Gospels must have some important lesson for us to pay attention to. But today I want to point out that only John's account included his desperate cry, I am thirsty. As uh, Jono pointed out with the children, many contemporary scholars have used this as an argument to convince people that Jesus was really fully human. But I have to tell you that the first century witnesses to the crucifixion, the ones who walked with Jesus and knew him, they understood that he was fully human. They had seen him eat and drink. They had observed him grow weary and sleep. And on that last day, they had heard him cry out and bleed. But for today, I want to tell you that these words, I am thirsty, were included to affirm for us that Jesus understands our suffering. I confess, I have never really experienced the pangs of hunger as a result of malnutrition. But I know thirst. Perhaps you do too. One of the things I learned after moving to Georgia was that there are conditions here that promote thirst. I call it the uh, double 90s. You know, when the temperature is above 90 degrees and the humidity is above 90 degrees, it's hard. It really is tough. I discovered, since I moved to Georgia, a particularly thirst-induced activity, hauling wood chips. I am up for a good challenge, I want to tell you. And I found that chipdrop.com will deliver a whole truckload of wood chips to you wherever you want it. The only problem is they can't tell you when it'll come, and you have to take the whole truckload. A truckload of wood chips is a lot of wood chips. Here is a picture of one of my recent wood chip deliveries. The, the, the white picket fence behind the, the is four feet tall. So this is a lot of wood chips. Um, if you've been by Tillman House in the last month, you may have seen a similar pile there because I arranged to have wood chips delivered to go around our garden. It makes really good mulch, but it's hard to move it. My estimate is it takes me about 15 hours to shovel those wood chips into a plastic bin in my garden cart, to pull the cart around to wherever in the yard I want to dump it, to pick up that bin and dump it over, and then go back and do it again and again and again. 15 hours. Now, I don't do all 15 hours at once. I have my limits. Usually, three hours is about my daily limit because I get thirsty and I get worn out. You see, these wood chips are mixed with 
dust, sawdust. They're mixed with thin little branches that get in the way when you try to shovel and you <laughs> just can't quite get under it. And every now and then, a big log. And breathing the dust from that big pile of wood chips, usually in the hot sun. Sometimes I'm smart and I order it on a, in a season where it's not quite so hot, but in July when the wood chips come, it's hot. Remember, the double 90s. So I always have available a refillable water bottle. Mm, this is good. Filled with Cobb County water. No fancy water bottles for me. I hate those single-use plastic bottles. Don't get me started. So I bring my own water. And I've discovered a few things hauling wood chips. Uh, there are some physical symptoms of dehydration. Do you know them? It's not just a dry mouth. Not just a dry mouth. There's the dizziness and the muscle fatigue and the confusion and the reduced cognitive processing. That means the brain melts and it drips out your ears. No doubt, Jesus experienced all of these. You see, on those last days of his life, first of all, he had lost blood from the flogging. He'd lost blood from that crown of thorns pressed down into his scalp. And he'd lost blood from the nails that were pounded into his hands. Oh, you can't see my feet, but I'm point. In addition, I have to assume that he was sweating. It was a hot day, and he had the exertion of hauling that cross at least partway to the hill. Apparently, he needed some help. It was pretty tough work. And finally, I'm guessing Jesus shed a few tears on that day. Not just from the physical exertion of the work and the physical pain, but also that emotional pain that he experienced. Blood, sweat, and tears. Of course, Jesus was thirsty. And we are told the guards offered him some wine. Now, they could have offered him water, but scholars tell us those soldiers were drinking wine. And it was not what we used to call when I was a kid or when I was a teenager, the good stuff. This was the cheap stuff, the, the sour wine, the spoiled wine, the wine that you diluted with a little water just to get it down. What you might not know is that at least two of the Gospels tell that this was not the first time Jesus was offered wine that day. Matthew and Mark's Gospel record that before he was nailed to the cross, as they were preparing to put those nails into his hands, the soldiers offered him some wine the cheap stuff, mixed with some bitter herbs, gall or myrrh, something that was used in those days to dull the pain. Probably it made it easier for the guards to put those nails in, knowing they'd at least tried to relieve the pain of this person being crucified. But they both record that Jesus refused the wine that first time, mixed with the bitter herbs to ease the pain, as if once he had accepted drinking that cup that his father had offered to him, he wanted to experience the full experience of the pain of death. 
he understood that it would be painful and still he refused until at the very end when jesus was near death he agreed to at least sate a bit of that physical thirst he took some of the sour wine from a sponge raised up from a hyssop branch hyssop is that significant maybe i don't know some people argue oh a hyssop branch isn't strong enough to do that's not the point <laughs> you know what the point is jesus understands suffering he really died I would have to argue that those first century observers at the crucifixion were more likely to have questioned Jesus' divinity than his humanity. Maybe they hadn't seen the miracles he had performed, the healings, turning water into wine, but they could see him suffer. They knew he was human. There's no argument from this text that Jesus suffered physical thirst. Dizziness, muscle fatigue, confusion, and even reduced thinking. But I can also imagine Jesus experienced a spiritual thirst that day. Think about it. The day before, he had been betrayed by Judas. One of his closest disciples, Peter, had denied even knowing him. And as he hung on that cross, all but the beloved disciple, whom we assume was John, were hiding. They were not there. His friends had abandoned him. And two weeks ago, here, we heard that as Jesus was on that cross, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Surely, after submitting to God's will that he die on the cross, Jesus experienced the desolation of being separated from the Father who loved him. He was alone. So as we remember how Jesus was literally dying from dehydration, I have a question for you. Yeah, I ask a lot of questions. What is it that you thirst for today? Just as most of us have experienced the pain of physical thirst at least a little bit, surely we have also known those pains of spiritual thirst. The advertisers, they know what it is we're longing for. They know how to trigger those desires in us, to connect us with their products and their services. So you're feeling lonely? What do you have? A soft drink? A burger? Some wine? Or something stronger? Are you feeling unappreciated or unimportant? Well, you just need some new jewelry or some new clothes. Is your life just unhappy? All you need is this vacation or this new diet plan. And maybe, maybe you just lack purpose in your life. Well, you just need a new toy or a new pastime to distract you. 
It's a trick. They know what you want, and they pair up the images and sensations of your happiness with something they're selling. Friends, we are all thirsting, not just for water. We're thirsting for that living water that Jesus offered to the Samaritan woman at the well. Do you remember she had come to take water back to her household, but she came in the middle of the day, the heat of the day, because she didn't want to be seen by the other women. And Jesus offered her something that would last, living water from a well that would never run dry. I'm reminded of the words from Psalm 63, where it says, Oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water, I've seen this kind of thirst in my ministry in local churches. I've seen it more recently in my spiritual direction practice. Someone is diagnosed with a serious illness or a loved one has died. They have an important decision to make and they don't know which way to turn. They just can't seem to find God anywhere. Maybe their faith is intermixed with a little bit of doubt. They can't find joy in the mundane things of life. Where is that Holy Spirit power and guidance that we were all promised? Why do I feel abandoned when I know God is still here? This morning, as we remember how Jesus suffered a desperate thirst on that cross, I'm also reminded that we are facing a global water crisis. Did you know 663 million people around the globe lack access to clean, safe drinking water? 663 million. But even more staggering, over a billion people have no knowledge of Jesus. And they have little chance of hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ before they die. Yeah, some live in remote parts of the globe that we would never go to, but I have to tell you, others live on your street or right around the corner. What are you doing about this spiritual crisis? Matthew 25 tells us that when Jesus returns and the nations will be judged, they are judged by how they respond to anyone who was hungry or thirsty, as if they responded to Jesus himself. Jesus was thirsty on that cross, but friends, he is still thirsty today. Jesus is thirsty when anyone is thirsty, physically or spiritually. And you and I, we are challenged to take on the hard work of giving a cup of cold water to anyone who needs it. We can relieve Jesus' thirst today as we work together to meet those physical and spiritual needs of others. Lord, we pray, please make it so. Amen.
In just a few moments, you will be invited to come to the Lord's table to receive the bread and the cup. And just again, some instruction as we prepare for that this morning. Um, you'll come either be directed by the ushers to this front chancel rail or to the second one. And in the place there are small individual cups of juice, if you would like. Otherwise, a common cup will be brought by that you may take the piece of bread and just dip the corner of it into the, the juice and may partake that way. It's up to you whether you use the common cup for the juice or whether you want to use the individual one. But we will try to serve everyone as expeditiously as we can, but as reverently and peacefully as we are able. And so if you will, please join with me in our litany that you will find in your program or on the screen. Hear the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Blessed are you, Lord God Almighty, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal word and the Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people Israel and spoke through your prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And so with your people on earth and in the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who called you Abba, Father. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own and filled them with a longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. In Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself um, our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by his blood. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I invite the communion stewards to come at this time to be served, and then after they have been, um, the ushers will direct you at that time. Thank you.
And now, may you go forth this day seeking those whose bodies are thirsty for life-giving water and those whose spirits long for a loving Savior, offering to them the healing balm of forgiveness and of hope. Amen.